Hey everyone, welcome to a new type of video that, well, you might not expect to see on my channel considering I do Let's Plays. However, I did want to show this off because it's kind of cool. What exactly is this? Well, as the video title kind of shows, this is basically how the basics of animating Pokemon. Now, uh, first off, this program that I use is called Blender. Now, I'm kind of behind because this is version 2.70 and their latest version 2.73, so... I'm kind of a little bit behind, but either way, I'm pretty sure you should be able to do all this. It shouldn't have changed, according to what I've read in the fixes, anyway. So, um, so yeah, this is Blender, and I will be leaving the link for it in the description so that you guys can download it if you want to and check it out. So, this is the, using this program is how I made my intro. Now, first off, I'm going to click X and hit delete so we, because we don't need that cube. Um, this is how I managed to make my intro. It took a while. It took some time, and blood, and sweat, and tears, but mostly time. Actually, pretty much all time. But, in the end, I did manage to make a really cool intro, I think, and uh, I'm pretty happy with it, and I wanted to show some of you guys how to do the same, so I just thought I'd share, which is why I'm making this video. I'd also like to give credit to ROE Studios or Root of Evil Studios, their website will also be in the description. They also have tutorial videos on how to deal with their models. Some of the information is a little outdated, and I will go over what I know about in this tutorial. So, in case you don't understand what's going on here, don't worry, there will be a backup. So, yeah. First thing I'm going to do, I'm going to come up here to File, and if you, if you ever, if you do watch the first episode, or the first part of the tutorial of how to handle these models in ROE Studios, they'll tell you don't open them if it doesn't open, or don't open them, because you shouldn't right now at first. You should come to Import, come down here to Wavefront.obj, and then you should... Open your model. Go to your models folder. I'm going to use using a mudkip because mudkip's amazing. Yeah. Now I'm going to click here. See the mudkip.obj file. Click that. Open it up. And we get what looks like a mudkip. Now, at first, this looks fine. This looks like the shape of a mudkip. And it looks all right. However, if we come down here to viewpoint shading, click this gl um, circle thing next to the object tab. And if we switch it, we can switch what we see on the model. If we switch it to texture, we suddenly see that everything goes wrong because Mudkip is not magenta, and that's definitely not the texture of a Mudkip. And if we even try rendering it, something goes wrong because we see the model. That's the three D. That's the three D model. That's correct, but there's no texture, and that's not what we want because that's dumb. Why would you animate a Pokemon model without its texture? Now, I've not found why this happens. At first, I thought maybe it was because I had a Mac, but apparently it happens on Windows as well. I've seen that happen on Windows as well. So, I'm still not completely sure why this happens, but uh, apparently, if for me, if you if you do open the models, it seems to work correctly, but from, from my knowledge. So, I'm just going to come here, open Recent, because I already dealt with this recently, and we get this new, completely new window. Let me just show you guys how to put this into an, a de better window, because this is definitely not what the way we want to edit our model. Now, here's how you change it to the way Blender was originally. Now, I'm just going to drag this down a little bit, and if you see this tab here, it says Current Editor Type. You want to change this from Properties to Timeline. This was how it was when we first started it. We want to drag that down a little. We're not really going to be using that at all in this part. I'm going to click this corner right here. If we drag it over, we get this we get this double view, so we can see two parts of it, and this will help when we're editing. If you don't want this, if you do this accidentally, what you can do is you can click this, hold, and drag it here. You'll see an arrow, and it will close. However, I do want this, so I'm going to keep it like that. And then I'm going to open another one, but this one's not going to be to actually view and edit the model. It's going to be, we're going to change this from 3D view to properties. Drag that over a little bit, because I don't really need that properties to have to be that big. And then we'll open, we'll... Click here, drag down, another Properties tab opens, but instead we want to change this to Outliner. This outlines all the different meshes that are here and that are selected. And uh, yeah, all of these are called meshes, so yeah. Mm, before we start doing anything with the model, before we start editing, before we do anything, go away. Stupid updates, whatever. <laughs> Sorry. Uh, we want to come down here, want to hit User Preferences. If we click File, User Preferences, come to Input. If you do not have a numpad, you will want to click edit, emulate numpad. What this does is it'll treat your number keys that are under your function keys as your numpad numbers. The reason it, that this is important is because Blender does treat your, your number keys and your 
numpad keys separately. In fact, it doesn't even use your number keys really. So it really just uses your uh, your number pad keys. Now, why is this important? Because if we click, come here and click view, we'll notice that it says control numpad two and all sorts of stuff. This is the pan to check its different views. Like if we click eight, it'll go up. Click one, it'll go front side view. Three, it'll show this kind of view like that. But that is only if we have numpad. If we don't have a numpad, we have to click that setting so that our number keys can be treated as a numpad. So I'm going to click eight and six to move this into a 3D view, sort of. Uh, actually, you know what? I'm just going to keep it a front view for now. And what I'm going to do here is going to come down here to viewpoint shading, click texture. We got it. it looks like Mudkip has been fixed. No more purple texture, or whatever, which is nice. But you know, I like I said, I still don't know the trouble with importing the OEJ files. But uh, yeah, as far as I know, this works. Now, before now, we'll notice a problem if we try to drag the mesh. We'll notice that the mouth and the eyes aren't connected, and that's really creepy because Mudkip without eyeballs is creepy. Yeah, duh. But before we do fix that problem, I'm going to drag this down here. Now, this is completely optional. I oftentimes don't even use this. However, it is kind of cool and I want to show it off. We come here and we change 3D view to UV image editing. Let's click this mesh in the back. We'll click the body. We click tab to go into edit mode. We'll notice that we can also do that by clicking object mode, go to edit mode here, and we get all this. Now, these are all the vertices. These are all the parts that make up Mudkip. We'll notice they're all mapped onto this object or whatever it is. This is the texture. These are all called UVs. Now what the UVs do is they map these vertices that are all part of this. They map this texture onto that part. And uh, so basically this is how the model has its texture and that's what's absent from the OBJ file. If we click A to select all and we click G to move it around, we can change Mudkip's texture. What have you done to him? What is that thing? That, that that looks creepy, and that almost looks like a Torchic, but I'm not even going to go there, because Mudkip with a beak is actually kind of creepy. It actually did look like a beak, holy cow. <laughs> so we already know that we can't edit all the UVs, because if we do that, we edit the skin, and that doesn't look like a Mudkip anymore. However, the reason we can use UVs to edit is we can do this. We can select this tab, we click Edit, we click Tab to get into edit mode, we'll notice this thing here. If we click A to select all the vertices, and we click G to grab them, we can move them around. Now, I'm angry Mudkip. Now, I'm happy Mudkip. Now, I'm Mudkip with no eyeballs. Now, I'm sleepy Mudkip. Now, I'm sad Mudkip. Now, I'm brock-eyed Mudkip. Or irritated Mudkip. I don't know what that expression is. But, uh, this is an optional thing. And uh, the reason I'm showing this now is because once we join all the meshes together, we cannot edit UVs. There was a fix for this on RE Studios, but that doesn't work anymore. And uh, yeah, I generally don't use this because I don't really want to edit my Pokemon's uh, uh, expression usually. I don't really want that, so I usually leave it like this. So it's up to you guys. You can choose to edit it as you want. Just a warning though, you if once you join the meshes, you will not be able to edit UVs again. So be sure it's in the right expression that you want it to be in. Now, what I'm going to do here is, now I'll change it to 3D view, 8 and 6, so you can change it to 3D view. I'm going to, you can click A, like I said, select all, that's select all, deselect all button. Um, or another thing you can do, and this is important because later on you want to do this, you can click, uh, you can click, we can right click. I, I should have mentioned this, by the way, I'm sorry I didn't, but you right click to select in this uh, program. You right click, you can right click one mesh, then you can shift select another. And you can even do that in the outliner. You can shift select this one as well. You notice that all three are highlighted, which means that they are all selected. What we want to do here is we want to go to object and we want to hit join or control J on your keyboard. That works too. Hit that. We want to move our mudkip around and it works as one big object and that solves our concern. Now, there's only one thing we want to do and uh, we can't render this. The reason is there are no cameras on scene. Some models do have cameras and lighting automatically in the scene, and some models don't. So if we don't have a model, that's no biggie. We just click Shift A, and we can hit Select, and we can, or Shift A to add stuff. We'll get this window. We want to add camera. It'll be situated at the origin. Now, I'm going to click Zero. Now, this would, like I said, you have to have emulate, emulate numpad for this to work. You can see through the camera. This is what it'll render. So if you hit Render, it'll render that, which is actually, that was a horrible place to render. I'm not, I'm not. That was just a tail, don't worry. That was just a tail. <laughs> so I'm gonna pull this camera back a little, just kind of drag it along these. You can also hit G, you can hit Z, 
to drag along this Z axis, X, drag along X axis, Y, drag along this axis. Or we can just hit G and free drag it, whatever. I'm just gonna hit this. We'll move it this way, and then what we'll do is we'll click R, we'll click Z to rotate it along the Z axis. Uh, come on, work, 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 work. Ah, there we go. All right, so that's around the area we want it, and I'll move it a little closer. So I'll hit G, X, and G, Y, kind of move that around there. We can have our mud kit, we kind of look at it. I'll also rotate this along the Z axis again, and we can have that. So this is our image. I made a mistake, actually, because before we do anything, we want to change this resolution to whatever you guys want to. It depends on what you're going to render in. I'm going to hit 1280 by 720. Even if you're not planning to render right away, this will affect how your scene, how your camera resolution is. So you want to preset your resolution right away so you know what your scene will look like. Because if you render, if you do this in like the earlier resolution and then you change the resolution, the scene will look entirely different and it'll be weird. So you want to change the resolution right away. So we'll have this kind of picture and, uh, sure, let's have that. Okay, so we can see Mudkip. We can. This is how it'll render. So if we hit render now, we get suddenly a black silhout. Silhout, whatever. However you pronounce that word, whatever. You get a black shading of Mudkip, but that's not what we want. I mean, the textures are there. Why isn't it rendering properly? You know what I hate? Cliffhangers. Uh, yeah. We're gonna go over lighting effects and smoothing out this mesh in the next part. So this is just kind of an intro and the basics of Blender. So. Uh, yeah, that's really about all I'm going to cover for this video. I hope you guys enjoyed this uh, intro, kind of, to how to animate Pokemon. And uh, if you are interested, and if you like this, if you like where this is going, if you like how it started, uh, feel free to give me a like, and if you have any questions, go ahead and comment below. The websites will be in the description, as I promised, and uh, yeah, I can't wait to get this, start get this series started, or get this going, you know? So thank you guys so much for watching, and I will see you guys next time.